Michael Bakery Jordan is an American actor and producer. He is best known for his film roles as shooting victim Oscar Grant in the drama Fruitvale Station, boxer Adonis Creed in Creed, and Eric Killmonger in Black Panther, all of which were written and directed by Ryan Coogler. Wikipedia Born, February 9, 1987, age 37 years, Santa Ana, California, upcoming movie, untitled Ryan Coogler film. Parents, Michael A. Jordan, Donna Jordan. Education, Arts High School. Height, 6 foot 0. Siblings, Kala Jordan, Jamila Jordan. Michael B. Jordan, the middle of three children, was born in Santa Ana, California and raised in Newark, New Jersey. He is the son of Donna, Davis, a high school counselor, and Michael O. Jordan, his middle name, Bakari, means noble promise in Swahili. He is not related to, or named after, basketball legend Michael Jordan. Jordan has starred in three of the most critically acclaimed television dramas of the past decade. First, Jordan played the hard-shelled, but soft-hearted Wallace in HBO's dramatic hit series The Wire, 2002. He then went on to star as quarterback Vince Howard on Friday Night Lights, 2006, NBC before playing a recovering alcoholic, Alex, on NBC's Parenthood, 2010. Jordan successfully took on his first major leading film role, when he starred as Oscar Grant in Fruitvale Station, 2013. The film is an account of Oscar's controversial slaying, by police officers on a San Francisco train platform. The cast includes Octavia Spencer and Melanie Diaz, and was produced by Forrest Whitaker, Significant Films. It premiered at the 2013 Sundance Film Festival where it received the Grand Jury Prize, an audience award for U.S. dramatic film. It also screened at the 2013 Cannes Film Festival in the Uncertain Regard category, that has garnered many awards including Best First Feature, at the 2014 Independent Spirit Awards, Outstanding Independent Motion Picture at the 2014 NAACP Image Awards, and the 2014 Stanley Kramer Award from the Producers Guild of America. The 2013 New York Film Critics Circle honored it with Best First Film, and the picture was also chosen as one of the top 10 films at the 2013 National Board of Review Awards, where Jordan took home the award for Breakthrough Actor. Jordan also won the 2013 Gotham Award for Breakthrough Actor, and was nominated for an Independent Spirit Award for Best Lead Actor. In 2015, Jordan starred in Josh Trank's Fantastic Four, 2015, playing the role of Johnny Storm. Aka, The Human Torch, opposite Miles Teller, Jamie Bell, and Kate Mara for 20th Century Fox. The film was released on August 7, 2015. Jordan previously starred in 20th Century Fox box office hit Chronicle, 2012, which was also directed by Trank. A supernatural thriller that follows three Portland teens, MBJ, Dane Dehan, and Alex Russell, as they develop incredible powers after exposure to a mysterious substance. That awkward moment, 2015, opposite Zac Efron and Miles Teller for Focus Films, and the George Lucas-produced film Red Tails, 2012, the story of the first African-American pilots to fly in a combat squadron during WWI Ayaka the Tuskegee Airmen. Jordan reunited with Ryan Coogler for Creed, 2015, starring alongside Sylvester Stallone and Tessa Thompson. The film was released on Thanksgiving 2015 by MGM and Warner Brothers. A devoted fan of comic books growing up, Jordan starred as the villain, Eric Kilmoner, in the 2018 box office smash Black Panther, 2018. In 2018, he is also starring as Guy Montag in the HBO adaptation of Ray Bradbury's science fiction classic Fahrenheit 451, 2018. He resides in Los Angeles, where he supports the charity Lupus Law. Family, Children, No Children, Parents, Donna Jordan, Davis, Michael L. Jordan, Relatives, College Jordan, Sibling, Jamila Jordan Dews, Sibling, Trademarks, Often works with Ryan Coogler, Trivia, Was homeschooled but was allowed to play on the basketball team at New Jersey's Newark Arts High School, Took tap dancing lessons as a child, Was considered for Harry Osborne in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, 2014, But lost to his Chronicle, 2012, Co-star Dane Dehan, And for Sam Wilson, Falcon and Captain America, The Winter Soldier, 2014, which went to Anthony Mackie. His favorite actress is Meryl Streep.
No relation to the basketball player Michael Jordan. He inserted a middle initial in his name to avoid confusion. No relation to the basketball player Michael Jordan. He inserted a middle initial in his name to avoid confusion. Before he started booking acting gigs, he appeared in ads for models sporting goods and toys, R Us. His middle name, Bakari, is Swahili and means, of noble promise. He was offered the role of Dr. Dre in Straight Uta Compton, 2015. He is a huge anime fan. Friends with Chadwick Boseman. Just like Chris Evans, he is the second actor to portray Johnny Storm, Human Torch, in a failed attempt at a Fantastic Four franchise prior to joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Has appeared in several films featuring superheroes, Powers. He was Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four, 2015, Eric Kilmoner in Black Panther, 2018, Steve Montgomery in Chronicle, 2012, and voiced Victor Stone, Cyborg in Justice League. The Flashpoint Paradox, 2013, was listed in People Magazine's annual Sexiest Man Alive issue, 2013, appeared on Variety's Top 10 Actors to Watch, list, 2013, one of Time Magazine's 30 People Under 30 Changing the World, 2013, chosen by People Magazine as the Sexiest Man Alive in 2020, appeared on the Roots list of the 100, Most Important Black Influences Between the Ages of 25 and 45, for 2013. The route focuses on African-American politics, culture, and society, was considered one of the 25 best actors in their 20s by Complex Magazine, 2013. He was originally cast as Marcus Atwood in Triple Nine, 2016, but dropped out due to scheduling conflicts. Anthony Mackie replaced him. Named as GQ Magazine's Breakout of the Year for 2013, was considered one of the 55 faces of the future by Nylon Magazine's Young Hollywood issue. He lived with his parents in a Sherman Oaks home that he purchased. He grew up in a religious household and considers himself to be spiritual. Ranked at pound 21 on GQ's 25, Most Stylish Men of 2013, appeared on the Entertainment Weekly list, New Hollywood, Entertainers of the Rise, 2013. Younger brother of producer Jamila Jordan Dews appeared on the 2013 Power 100 list for Ebony Magazine, 2013. Co-founded Obsidian Works, a full-service advertising and marketing agency. He was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6201 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California on March 1, 2023. There are 11 other Michael Jordans born in his home state of California, the same year he was born. 1,987, owns a minority percentage in English Premier League football team AFC Bournemouth. He was nominated for the 2022 New Jersey Hall of Fame in the Performing Arts and Entertainment category. Born at 8.14 p.m. PST. Born on the same date as Rose Leslie. Quotes, on growing up, Newark isn't a playground. I had friends that sold drugs, stole cars. Being African American and driving a nicer car than cops thought I should. A BMW at age 16, gave me problems. On his role as the late Oscar Grant in Fruitvale Station, 2013, I prayed to Oscar a lot. I asked him to be around me, to give me his essence. When I was shooting that scene, one felt like I could have lost my life. I was scared, and I think that's how Oscar felt. I would love to play a psychopath. Oh man, that would be amazing. I want my love role. I've never been in love, in a movie, before, so I want to know what that's like. I want to play that action hero, that guy that saves the day. I want to play the role that's a little off and weird. I want to play the killer. I want to get inside the head of somebody like that. I want to be a pilot. I want to play the astronaut. I want to play the oil rigger in the Pacific. I can't wait to be up for, say, the next Jason Bourne, on being known for his characters dying. My mom has seen me die way too much. I gotta give her a break. Hopefully, moving forward, I'll make it through the third act on how he got involved with Fruitvale Station, 2013. Honestly, my agent gave me the script. We were talking about what I wanted to do, and I told him I want to do a big film, and that I want to do a gritty, independent film. And I was blessed to get Chronicle, 2012, and then right after that he gave me Fruitvale to read. I read it and started crying, like it was pretty heavy. I was like, who wrote it? And he was like, Ryan Coogler. I was like, okay, we gotta talk. And we had a cup of coffee and we chopped it up and talked, and there was no doubt in my mind that I wasn't doing it. On working with Octavia Spencer, Octavia is awesome. She's a really giving actress, you know, she's very funny. She can definitely lighten the mood when every boat is all sobbing, and we had an emotionally draining day. 
she'll lighten the mood and say something to get everybody smiling again and get us in a good mood. On Fruitvale Station, 2013, from an actor's perspective, it's the moment I've wanted to happen for a long time, to be able to be the lead of a film, to go to Sundance, to prove yourself with the material. I'm getting all this attention and all this success off of this tragic event. It's a bittersweet type of feeling. I love Ben Affleck. He's definitely somebody that I respect his opinion, and I pick his brain whenever I get a chance. On his Independent Spirit Awards for Best Male Led, for Fruitvale Station, 2013, it's mixed emotions. Just the fact we have to tell the story of a young man, who lost his life the way he did, somebody that could have been me, but also that people are affected by the work, that it really has people thinking, feels like a victory in my book. I think all the awards buzz is just getting it more attention. The accolades and nominations encourage people who might not have wanted to see it, or thought they'd watch it when they get around to it. They might now give it a look. Zach Efron is my brother right here. We went through the trenches together. Miles Teller is very witty and always has something smart to say. He's a good guy and has become one of my brothers too. It's funny how you work on films and build up these friendships off camera. It's cool. On how he handles award season, I usually cover my ears and run that way. It's always trying to manage expectations. You just show up and do the work. After it's a wrap, there's not much you can do about it. Just gotta ride the wave and take everything as it comes. That's the best way, I think, to handle it. On getting to know Oscar Grant's family and friends while filming Fruitvale Station, 2013, getting to know them and getting to know Oscar through them was very awkward at first, very hard, very sad, but then it started to loosen up. It became almost a healing process for them to talk about it. They gained a bigger voice. To be a part of that was an honor. With all his best friends, we went to a park, ordered some barbecue, played dominoes, drank a little bit, just like things I would do with my boys back home in Jersey, and I listened to stories. You get a sense of who Oscar was in certain environments. He was a chameleon, he used to blend in. No matter where he was, he was somebody different, depending on what group of people he was around. So that was something that was very interesting to play through the movie, on if he stayed in character between takes during the filming of Fruitvale Station, 2013, I got out of it a lot. When it was heavy I was in it, but it was so much more than that. It was a love story, it was so many moments of him showing love to people he cared about. There was always the constant struggle between good and evil with him, he was always at a fork in the road, do I go left or do I go right, and he would try to make the right decision, so playing that indecisiveness was really cool. On how he felt during the first time, he watched Fruitvale Station, 2013, I was like, okay, can we cut to something else? I was tired of looking at my face, I was like, this is it, if this goes bad, it's all on me, there's nothing else on the screen. That was a weird moment for me. But once we were at Sundance opening night, and his family saw it, their response to it, that's when the weight lifted off my shoulders. I was, like, these are the people that knew him, and if they are okay with it, then I'm good with it. Everything else is icing on the cake. I want to do everything. I'm a producer at heart. Eventually, when I can produce the way I want to, my acting's going to help fuel that. And not just vehicles for myself. I'm a member of this film society, and I want to contribute. If you're in the industry, you can't just take from it, you have to deposit something back to keep it going for the next generation. Describing the moment his character was killed off the wire, 2002, life was amazing. I was on a TV show. I was 16 years old. I had craft services. I was getting homeschooled. It was amazing. And then I got that dreaded knock, on my trailer door episode 12 by David Simon. And no actor wants that visit by David Simon. Actors were dropping like flies, left and right. I remember just getting the script, and you'd just skim through to the last couple pages to make sure your name was still there to see if you survived. So Wallace was killed off. Yeah. And I was devastated because you know as an actor you never know what's coming up next. You never know when your next job is going to be. And I was a kid. I was pretty devastated by that. On Fantastic Four, 2015, that project is one of the those things. You've got to accept sometimes that you can give 110% and still not turn out the way you want it. Some things are just out of your control. They're bigger than me. I'm a comic book guy. I grew up reading comics and graphic novels, and being fans of those worlds. I want to play a villain so bad. Just a villain. I've been playing the good guys, and that's cool. But just to play a villain that's so opposite of who I am. Salaries. Without remorse. 2021. 15 million dollars. Black Panther. 2018, $2 million.